Hello boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson. My name is Casey Watts and I'm a fourth grade English language arts teacher at Laurel Magnet School of the Arts in Laurel, Mississippi. We are a part of Mississippi Arts Commission's Whole Schools Initiative, which means that we teach through the arts and the academics at our school. Today we're gonna do a lesson with context clues and reading while also getting to do some dance. How many of you like to dance? Me too, I love to dance. Although to be honest, I'm not very good at it, so forgive me. But how, what kind of styles of dance do you like to do? Maybe country line dancing, hip hop, freestyle? What about ballet? Yeah, I think I heard a few yeses, but I also think I heard some, oh no, not ballet. A lot of people think that ballet is really hard, but it's actually the terminology in ballet that can make it hard. The ballet is made up of the French language. All the terms are come from French. Do you speak French? Me either, but I can use context clues to figure out the terms in ballet and to know what they mean when they're unfamiliar to me. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's first look at our essential question. Our essential question today is how can a reader use context clues to understand the meaning of unfamiliar words? Our standards are from English language arts, the reading literature standard, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text. Our language standard is use context as a clue to determine the meaning of a word or phrase. And then we also have a dance standard to interpret intent. And interpret just means to figure out intent and meaning in artistic work and relate those movements, ideas, and there's our keyword, context, to decipher meaning in a dance using basic dance terminology. Before we begin, let's come back and do a warm up. Whenever we dance, you need to warm up your body. It helps your muscles and joints to get ready to do your dance movements. As we're warming up, we're also gonna warm up with some strategies that can help us when we're doing context clues. Here are some strategies on my anchor charts behind me on the wall. So when you look, we've got six different types, three on one side and three on the other. We'll go through each of these terms as we're warming up today. Let's look at our first one, definition. Let's do some movements of definition. I'm gonna bring up my knees, kind of like the round part of a D for definition and warm up my hips. Can you do that boys and girls? Good job. Let's warm up a little bit more with definition. Everybody say definition as we're warming up. Good job. Now let's move to the next example, which is example. This is a type of context clue. I'm gonna do an X for example and bring my body down, work out those hips and get them ready to dance. Good job. Everybody say example as you're warming up. Let's move to our next type of context clue, which is synonym. For synonym, we're going to do an S for synonym. Can you feel your back stretching out as you're doing the S? Yes. Everybody say synonym as we're doing our warm up. Good job. Our next type of context clue is antonym. Let's make an A with our bodies. Bring your leg out and your arms up to make an A. Everybody say antonym as we do this warm up. Good job. Next is word parts. Let's move our shoulders a little bit. We move our shoulders a lot when we dance. Word parts, word parts. Say it with me as we do this warm up. Good job. And our last one is inference. Everybody stretch out really tall for inference, like an eye. Stretch it as far as you can. All right, now that we've warmed up our bodies, let's warm up our minds a little bit more and look closer at each of these types of context clues. Over here with our definition clue, here is what a definition means. The meaning of the word is explained right there in the sentence. The author gives us this clue to help us out. Let's look at an example. Tom felt capable of doing the new dance. 
He felt he had the ability and skills to be successful. So how, what context clues help me to know what capable means in this sentence? Exactly. The author gives us the exact definition, the ability and skill to be successful. So this is our first type of context clue, definition. Our next type of context clue is example. Let's look at example. Example is exactly that. An example of the word is given right there in this sentence. Let's look back at our sample sentence. Tom felt capable of doing the new dance because he was good at doing the robot and the electric slide. Here the author did not give us a definition, but they gave us some examples. What were the examples that the author gave? Exactly, robot and electric slide. So because I know he's good at doing these types of dances, then he must be capable or able to figure out these dances and do them. Our next type of context clue are synonyms. Everybody say synonyms. I bet you've heard these words in class before. These are words that have similar meaning and they're given right there in the sentence to help us figure other unfamiliar words out. Let's look at our sample sentence. Tom felt capable of doing the new dance because he was able to do the robot and had effectively danced the electric slide. Do you see some synonyms in this sentence that help us figure out what capable means? Yes. I see able and I also see effectively. Both of these let me know that when somebody is capable of doing something, they're able to do it and they do it effectively. Good job. Now we're gonna look at three more types of context clues. Over here we have antonym. Antonym is the opposite of a word. Where synonym is the same meaning, antonyms are the opposite. So let's look at our sample sentence and see if we can find some words that mean the opposite of capable. Sue felt she was not capable of doing the dance move. She felt unsure of herself. What word lets you know that's maybe the opposite of capable? Yes, unsure. So if Sue feels uh, the opposite of Tom, she feels that she's not capable of doing the dance. She feels unsure of herself. So that helps us to know what the word means. Our next type of context clue is word parts. Word parts can be prefixes, suffixes, or roots that are in the word itself that help us figure out the meaning. Kind of like the word capable has able to right in it. And we talked about that even with our synonym. Let's look at this sample. Sue was incapable of doing the new dance. Hmm, what word part has been added to capable here? That's correct. In has been added. What does the prefix in mean, boys and girls? That's correct. It means not. So incapable means not capable. Sue feels that she is not capable or incapable, incapable of doing the new dance move. Our last type of context clue are inferences. Let's look at what an inference means. It's a word's meaning is not explained in the text. So the reader has to use other clues to figure it out. You also have to use some background knowledge. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's look back at our sample sentence. Sue was nervous about the new dance. She did not feel capable of doing it. What do I know about Sue in this sentence? Yes, she's nervous. And I know when I'm nervous that sometimes I feel like I'm not good at something and I can't do it. So I don't feel capable. And so capable means you're able to do it. She's not feeling that way, is she? So now that we know these six types of context clues, we can use them when we come to unfamiliar words to figure out what those words mean. So as we're reading today, watch out for words that are unfamiliar to you and watch out for these clues that the author gives so that we can figure out what they mean. Let's start by reading a story about a little girl named Annie who is going to ballet class for the first time. Here's our introduction. 
Quickly and excitedly, Annie hopped in the car so that her mom could drive her to dance class. Annie had been taking dance classes for a few years now, but she had not yet taken any ballet classes. Although Annie was really nervous, she was also ecstatic about learning this new style of dance. Do you see any words in this paragraph that are unfamiliar to you? Yes, I see the word ecstatic. Let's look at some context clues to figure out what ecstatic means. Do you see some context clues that help us out? Yes, Annie was excited. And I even see these words that say, although she was nervous, she was also excited. So I have kind of a synonym, excited. And then I also have kind of these clues that help me know that although she was nervous, she's also ecstatic, meaning kind of the opposite. So I know that ecstatic means to be excited. And I'm excited to learn about ballet along with Annie. Are you? Let's learn some terms in ballet. Annie walked into ballet class in her leotards and tights, ready to take on the challenge. After they were all warmed up, the dancers moved into the center of the floor to begin their adagio, which is a series of fluid and focused exercises that are performed slowly in order to improve dancers' balance, strength, and lines. The movement phrase was a little difficult for Annie, but she handled herself well and didn't even break a sweat. She loves to turn, so she was happy to get a chance to do pirouettes in class. She even got a chance to do chenet turns across the floor. Boys and girls, do you see some unfamiliar words in this paragraph? I sure do. What is the first unfamiliar term that we see? Correct, adagio. Adagio is a ballet term. And of course, remember we said that most terms in ballet come from the French language. So notice how normally we would probably say this word like adagio is how probably I would wanna say it. But we see in the G in the French language is actually pronounced J, so it's adagio. What context clues do we see that help us to figure out the meaning of the word adagio? Do you see them? That's correct. We see that an adagio is a series of fluid and focused exercises that are performed slowly in order to improve dancers' balance, strength, and lines. Let's come back to our anchor chart and figure out which type of context clue did the author use here? What do you think? Which type? Exactly. The author gave us a definition clue. The definition was right there in the sentence, letting us know that what an adagio was. So let's think about this word adagio. Here are the clues that we saw in the text. Fluid, slowly, balanced, and strength. Hmm, do you think we can figure out how to do this dance move in adagio? Let's try it. So I know that I need to have my movements be fluid. Hmm, when I think of fluid, I think of a liquid, something that flows. We know we've gotta be slow and balanced and use our strength. So let's try it out. All right, I'm gonna be slow. I'm gonna keep my balance. I hope I don't lose it. Can you do it with me? I'm gonna use my strength. Hmm, I've seen on TV that ballet, ballerinas sometimes put their legs out to the back. So I'm gonna try that. All right, do you think we're doing it correctly? Well, I'm not really sure. I use my clues to help figure it out, but I'm not a professional ballerina. So I've asked our dance teacher back at Laurel Magnet School of the Arts to help us out and show us exactly what an adagio looks like. Let's check out Miss Katie Pinkard from our school and see how she does an adagio. Notice her movements. Is she going slow? She's keeping her balance. She's using her strength, very flowy and fluid. So that's what an adagio is. I think it looks a lot like what we did, don't you boys and girls? Yes, I think we did a good job doing an adagio. Let's keep reading and look at some other terms. What 
was the next word as we read this paragraph that you saw? We saw adagio first. What was the next unfamiliar word that you saw? Yes, pirouettes. Can you say pirouettes? Good job. What context clues do we have for pirouettes? Let me reread the sentence. She loves to turn, so she was happy to get a chance to do pirouettes in class. Do you see the context clue? Correct. I see that she loves to turn, and she was happy to do the pirouette. So what type of context clue would that be here, boys and girls? Yes, that would be a synonym clue. If she loves to turn and she was happy to do the pirouette, then I know that turn and pirouette must have a similar meaning. So when we're thinking about the word pirouette and using our clue of turning, do you think you can do a pirouette and turn like a ballerina? Let's try it out. Hmm, now I've seen ballerinas put their arms up and twirl around. Have you seen that? That's a turn. I've also seen them put their arms out and turn. Can you do that? Yes, good job. Let's check out Miss Pinkard and see how she does a pirouette as a real ballerina. Yes, she turned. Oh, she turned forwards and then turned back again. Thank you, Miss Pinkard. Let's keep reading and look at our next unfamiliar word. Our next unfamiliar word is Shanae turns. Everybody say Shanae turns. Good job. Here's another word where the CH normally makes a ch sound, but here it's making a sh sound. A lot of times that happens in the French language. So it says she even got to do chenet turns across the floor. What context clues do we see here? I don't see very many. I see that she's going across the floor, but that doesn't really tell me how to do the move. I do see the word turns, but I know it's probably not like a pirouette because we just did a pirouette. But look at the word chenet. What do you see in that word? Yes, we see the word part chain. When I'm using a word part, that can help me figure out what it means. So when we look back at our context clues chart, our example is word parts. We were looking at a part of the word. Now let's think about the word chain. What do you know about a chain? Well, when I think about a chain, I think about a necklace and how it has small circles of metal going across. I also think about the chain on my bicycle and how it falls off a lot of times. And it has metal circles as well. So maybe a chenet turn is where we have to make circles going across the floor. Let's try it out. I'm going to start over here, and um, I've seen ballerinas put their arms out like this, so I'm going to make some circles. Can you do that, boys and girls? Let's go back the other way. That's fun. I like doing Shanae turns. All right, let's check out Miss Pinkard and see if we did it correctly. Ah, she's moving her arms in and out, but she's going in circles a lot like we did. I did notice that Miss Pinkard was pointing her toes more than I did. Feet position, I'm noticing, is a big part of ballet. So watch out for some feet positions in some later movements as well. Let's get back to our text. Next, it was time for Petite Allegro. Annie was nervous for this part of class because she knew that it would be faster and more tiring than other parts of class, especially because she had to do so much jumping. The combination was full of sautés, including hops and leaps. What is our first unfamiliar word that we come to? Correct, petite allegro. Can you say petite allegro? Good. What context clues do we have here? I don't see a definition, but I do see that this movement is going to be faster, more tiring, and include a lot of jumping. So what type of context clue do you think that this will be, boys and girls? 
I don't see a definition or examples or a synonym or even word parts. I don't know what petite allegro means, but I do see that it's going to be faster, more tiring, and include a lot of jumping. So I can make an inference here. Good. Let's infer how we would do this movement, petite allegro, using our keywords of fast, tiring, and jumping. Let's try it out. Okay, so I'm going to do some jumping. I'm going to make sure it's fast. I'm starting to get a little tired. Are you? Whew, I don't know if I can keep doing this for too long. I might need some water in a minute. Hmm, do you think we did it correctly? Maybe not, but we're using our context clues to figure it out, and I bet we're close. Let's check out Miss Pinkard and see how she does this movement. Looks like some small jumps, but definitely fast. I bet she's going to be tired if she kept doing that all day long. So that's what a petite allegro is. Let's keep reading. What's the next unfamiliar word that we came to? Yes, sautés. Now this word looks like it would be pronounced like sauces with an aw sound. But in the French language, they would pronounce this with an O sound, sautés. What context clues do we see here? Yes, it says including hops and leaps. Let's come back to our anchor chart. What types of context clues do you think we were seeing here? Yes, these were example clues. It's giving us an example right there in the sentence. I don't know exactly what sautés are, but I know it includes, that was a key word when they said includes, that gives us a, a hint that it's fixing to give us a, an example of the word. And I know it includes hops and leaps. So if we're using our key words of hops and leaps, let's try out a sauté. All right, so I'm going to hop and I'm gonna maybe leap some more hops. That seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Let's check out Miss Pinkard and see how she does a sauté. That looks a lot like what we did, but notice her feet position. She was pointing her feet a little more than I was. Thank you, Miss Pinkard. Let's keep reading. The only movements Annie had trouble with were the changements because they are unlike échappés. In an échappé, you have to move your legs to an open position before you switch your feet. What unfamiliar word do we see here? Yes, we see changements. Now, it might look like changements, but in the French language, they would pronounce it changements. Everybody say changements. That's a fun one to say. What context clues do we have here? Well, I don't see a lot that tells me about changements, but I do see that changements are unlike échappés. And in the sentence, it does tell me what an échappé is. So an échappé is when you have to move your legs to an open position before you switch your feet. Hmm, well if I know that in échappé you have to move your legs to an open position and changements are unlike échappés, then what's the opposite of open, boys and girls? That's right, closed. So I would think that I would have to have my feet in a closed position when doing a changement. Let's try it out. Let's start with an échappé. I'm going to move my legs to an open position and then I'm going to switch my feet. Open and switch, open and switch. Hmm, so that's open. Let's try a changement and keep our legs closed before switching. So my legs are closed and switch, closed and switch, closed and switch. Let's check out Miss Pinkard and see how she does it. She'll start with an échappé. Yes, she's moving to an open position before switching her feet. And now let's look at a changement. She's keeping her position closed before switching her feet. I think we did a really good job at that one. 
Let's finish out our text. Overall, Annie had a great time learning all of the new movements in ballet. She knew that this new dance style would challenge her and it would make her an even better dancer. She couldn't wait for the next class. And boys and girls, I've had a great time with you today using context clues and dance movements. I hope you see that you can use these clues anytime you come to a challenging or unfamiliar word. I can't wait to get to dance with you again. See you next time.